But Healed Girl Era is a, is a show that is really about the eras of our lives that defined us and the lessons we learned along the way um, to share with the people who are might be in the eras that we survived. Yeah. And I know you are in a ther in therapy and you are not the one to play about no therapy. <laughs> no. When was your like draw flashpoint when you like, I had to, I got to get some help? 2019, I flew back from Dallas. I had a gig in Dallas, flew back, me and my assistant. I started feeling really weird. Like I just started feeling like uncomfortable. My heart was always beating really fast. Mm. I wasn't sleeping. Um, I think Thanksgiving, <clears throat> my family came over and they were like, oh, we forgot. I think, I don't remember what my mom forgot, but she was like, you can go to the grocery store. I had my niece with me. Mm. Yeah, fine. Took my, to still feeling very weird, right? Like almost like uh, in a dream, yeah. but not a good dream. Mm. Just like half awake, half asleep, right? Mm. And I had my niece with me and she's probably, I think she was about nine at the time. And when I got into that grocery store, I had the worst panic attack. Wow. But do you know what's crazy? I was shielding it from my niece. I was like... Uh, Tiani, can you go get, uh, but I had to, and I had to have the panic attack, not in front of her. Yeah. So I can quickly regroup to get her home. Mm -hmm. I could barely drive home because I couldn't even concentrate. Wow. That is how bad it was. But I started to see that that mm. was the analogy for my life. I did all of that in private wow. and I never let anybody see it. I took all the stress. I took all the anxiety, all of the bad thoughts, all of the dark thoughts, and I hid it away from my whole entire family. Mm. And I laughed and he he keyed the rest of Thanksgiving. I kept going upstairs to cry, wipe, wipe my face off, and come back breathe, down. wait till I'm not puffy, come back downstairs. Wow. He <laughs> Until it got to a point where I couldn't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. Where my body said, if you're not going to take care of us emotionally, we're going to shut you down physically. And that is exactly what happened. That is like, first of all, thank you for sharing that. Because I know so many of us can literally, literally relate. It's scary because you don't want to disappoint your people. Like, that's why therapy is so important. I tell people, if it's it's scary that it's still a privilege and that a lot of people can't afford it. And yeah. I just, I really want to figure something out where I can, like, help women get therapy because black women especially need to be in yeah. therapy for free. What it's <laughs> This country has really done enough. Thank yeah. you. But when I think about the reality that so many of us don't want to disappoint our parents, mm -hmm. we don't want our siblings and our friends to worry about us, mm -hmm. we can't even really, like, if I really sit down and, like, think about the times where I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. Like, sometimes you can cry in the mirror and you're like, ooh, I'm going through it. But you got this. Mm -hmm. On those really dark days, you don't even get up to see no mirror. You just like, whatever. I don't even, I don't even care. Yep. And so I understand, like, having your fits and coming back down, putting off the your feelings and putting back on your responsibilities and the hats that people expect you to wear. Mm -hmm. So in therapy, when did you realize where that came from. Well, did you ever have a moment where you were like, oh, I watched somebody do that or that's how I learned to cope? Uh, this this world makes us that way. Mm. Black women especially. Mm. Black people in general always say, you know, they always say, you know, support the black man, da 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 black man. But like, what about, what about us? We're, we are literally conditioned to take care of everyone Everybody. and expected to take care of everyone but ourselves. And when we take care of ourselves, we're either masculine, mm. when we protect ourselves, we're masculine, or we are we're selfish. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Or we're, you know, we're not it's so many, so many labels when a black woman wants to just take care of herself Talk and protect it. herself. Yep. And I actually uh, went to my doctor and was like talking to her about what was happening. And she convinced me like, you're depressed. Mm. And I was like, that's not depression. What do you mean? She was like, you're a black woman and you're high functioning. So yeah, these little fits of crying, like you're depressed. This not sleeping, your heart's constantly racing, the sweats that you're getting, that is your body trying to get your attention. Jesus. 
And if you don't take care of yourself, I'm afraid for you. You need to get on medication. Excuse me? Excuse me? Medication? <laughs> medication? I know, I know. What are you talking about? I still do this. I still no. You need to get on medication, and so she had she recommended a psychiatrist for me to speak to, and I spoke to the psychiatrist, and I was just like, I just don't want to, you know. I'm literally, I can't even be still. I'm so anxious. I'm like this, wow. <laughs> like in the thing, like yeah, I don't. I just. And one thing that she said to me, she said, "You're afraid to take medication, and I'm afraid for you not to." And I said. Okay, I'll try it. Mm. Save my life. Wow. Save my life. That is so powerful. Because so many people, especially, are afraid to just get to the step because of the stigmas around what medication looks like in a healing journey. But God made therapists and God made medication and yep. God made the things so we could regulate all this stuff that's happening within our bodies. And I told my mom that. Like, you know, when I had the conversation with my mom... My mom is actually a life coach, and I had the conversation, and she was just like, well, there's not a natural way for you to do it, and blah, 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 blah. Listen, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist or a chemist or, any, any, a chemist or anything like that. I can only speak to my experience. If I did not take that medication, I would not be here. My God. 100%. I would not be here. What it did was just, it, it literally just took all the crowdedness out of my mind so that I can actually sit in therapy. Mm. Wow. And be able to, and working through that therapy, like, my goal was I, I don't want to be relying on this medication, not just because it's an, an, an antidepressant, but I don't, I really don't want to be on any, <laughs> any, anything. any on, <laughs> right. I really don't want to be on anything that long. Maybe that was my own stubbornness, but like, like a goal for myself. And, you know, after a couple of years, I was able because I learned great skills. I was in therapy for almost, what, what that was 2020. I've been in therapy for four years. Wow. And, you know, after two, I was able to, after changing my eating habits and working out and figuring out the things that worked for me, I was able to wean myself off of that mm. medication because I definitely ain't like 40 pounds on that. Right. Because that's the reality. <laughs> that's the reality too, right? Like yep. <laughs> medications come with side effects. Hey, I'll take it because I was here. Hello? You know what I'm saying? I was here. She was here. <laughs> I am so proud of you, black girl. You. I have to say that because this is not an easy decision for a lot of us to make. No. And the fact that you said it out loud, I'm sure will absolutely be the difference for people watching. Um, and, and I love that you shared that as part of your story. Yeah.